you guys want a tactic that scores over three goals a game and averages around about an 88% win rate in the league? If you do, then do stick around. So guys, it is Josh from FM Scout and today I'm going to be bringing you another tactic and it is going to be another one of Nap's fantastic tactics. This one is going to be a 4-2-3-1 and it is a ton of fun to use. We've tested with four teams all suggested by you guys so be sure to see if your team is included in today's episode if it isn't then be sure to comment the team you want to see tested with below and also any general tactic ideas but this one is a ton of fun to use and i would recommend downloading it the link is in the description if you do enjoy these tactic videos be sure to leave a like on this one subscribe to the fm scout channel and yeah check out the other content as well because there's a ton of good stuff going on right now so we're going to kick things off with FC Mitchelland, obviously over in Denmark. And this was a really fun team to test with because I never usually get the chance to test with teams like this. So it's really good to read your comments and pick up your suggestions. So that's why I always say comment because your team will be used. And I imagine it's quite good to see your team being tested with. So we were quite a successful season, I would definitely say. We managed to win the Superliga. We also won the Sidbank Pokalen and also got through the Champions League sort of phases Got through the groups as well, which was a big surprise, actually top on that over Leipzig. And unfortunately, we do match up against Manchester City, which is always going to be a tough ask. I mean, one of the toughest round of 16s you possibly could get. It's not as if you get, you know, a bit of an easy round of 16 and then match up against City in the semi-finals. No, this is round of 16 right at the start of the tournament after get, after doing so well. But unfortunately, just you're not going to beat Manchester City, especially in your first season with Mitchelland, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but it is what it is. We scored a 100 112 goals and only conceded 28 but this is the real standout by the way look how much we dominated this in terms of points it was really a, just a there was no competition at all but in terms of the goals i mean you've got junior bramadu who um no disrespected but is is a fairly average striker i would argue but obviously quite a standout player in this league i imagine scoring 68 goals with a 7.74 um, um, highest average match rate and sorry we've got pino sisto coming in with 28 assists and we're just going to skim this because we have got a lot of state of a lot of data to go over basically but we've got 68 here 23 13 13 13 10 9 8 7 we've got several what do you mean to do that we've got several goal scorers seven and upwards a lot of them over 10 we've got so many goals coming from different areas of the pitch which is always a good sign to a, a, a tactic that is meant to be all about goals 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 and the data hub explains this even further so conceded per game, you're looking at 0.88, which again is really, really good considering this isn't designed to be a defensive tactic whatsoever. And also score an over three goals a game, 3.50, bang on the dot. So three and a half goals scored a game and under a, you know, under a goal conceded per game. Can't really go wrong with that, in my opinion. So a very successful test in, in, in that sense. If we look into the overall sort of, um, where is it? If we go into this, go into the overview, we can see where we dominated, where we didn't, etc., etc. So most points per game, most goals, I mean, nearly sitting double over Randers FC. Most shots for, a lot more shots than the rest. Fewer shots against as well. Quite convincing in that area. Um, we've also got most dribbles made quite close there um and also fewest conceded so we, we dominated you know six of majority of the stats in the division to be fair obviously possession um we were three percent behind if you want to get really petty with a pass completion but this isn't although this is described as a ticky tacka tactic you, there is also a bit of pass and risk so that's why the pass completion isn't going to be you know into your 90s which we have seen on this channel before with some of the tactics but overall a great test we then hop over to the Norwegian Premier Division with Mould. Mould, I believe that's how you say that. Do let me know if I'm wrong. But however, we did manage to dominate this division as well. Winning the division, also the Norwegian Cup. Unfortunately, not the best display in the Conference League, as we do fall to FC Kong. But they are a decent side in that sort of area. But I just feel like we possibly could have got a little bit more out of it. But that is what it is. We managed to do our job over in Norway, and that's all that matters. We scored 110 goals and only conceded 25 going to be Vettin Barisha coming in with 46 goals, two players coming in with 21 assists, which is always a good sign because you can see that there's more than one player contributing with a lot of assists per season. Obviously, 20 plus assists is a good stat line. So when you've got more than one player doing that, that really is a good eye opener. 
In terms of the data hub, very similar stats as we've seen now. You've got 3.67 coming in. You've also, that's goals per game, by the way. And you've got conceded per game, 0.83. So a little less, um, which is always good to see as well. But they are very similar to what we saw before. And that's where I noticed quite a familiar pattern when you are using teams like this, with this sort of standard. You can expect to be scoring roughly about three and a half goals a game and still maintaining that under a goal conceded mark. In terms of the league stats, again, Dominated four stat lines in this division. So that is going to be most points per game sitting at um, 2.63. Most goals, 110, which is obviously double over second place. You've got most shots for at 631 and also fewest conceded at 25. So again, a very convincing season in my opinion. And just as, as I say in the first test, it's really fun to be testing in these different divisions compared to what I'm used to testing in. The next test is going to be with Manchester City. And this was a viewer suggestion because I've seen two or three comments actually saying, why have you stopped testing with a Man City a PSG each video? It's good to see both perspectives. So now it is back, guys. You are going to see one powerhouse team per sort of test, just in case you're, you are you know playing as teams like that or you've built a team like that standard. And when you do use a team like Manchester City, this tactic really does get firing on all cylinders. I mean... I'm pretty sure you've seen it, right? But Erling Haaland, in my opinion, the best striker in the game, in the world, 134 goals this season, which is absolutely nuts, to be fair. I mean, that alone is a, is a fantastic stat line. You put that alongside the win in the Premier League, you won the Champions League and the Carabao Cup. So won the treble, obviously the Premier League, we made a little bit of a mockery of as well. I mean, 100 points compared to Liverpool's 82. We scored 161 goals in the season, only conceded 28. And like I said, you've got Erling Haaland coming in here with 134 goals. You've got Bernardo Silva coming in with 48 assists. I mean, it is really a really dangerous stat line. And I know Erling Haaland is a ridiculous player, but it's just always a it's just ridiculous to see 134 goals coming out of him this season. So fair play to him. If we go into what is going to be the data hub, we can see here, and this is going to be higher, obviously. This is a better team. I'm aware of that. But we are looking at over four goals a game with this one. 4.24 goals per game and only concede a 0.74. So I'd actually argue this is slightly better because obviously... We are also in the Premier League. I know we've got a better team, but we are facing tougher opposition. Obviously, we've also got these serious competitions that we're playing in as well. And we've come out and put on an absolute display. Now, I know this one is strictly for the Premier Division, so this doesn't include the UCL, etc., etc. But even against Premier League sides, there's sort of five, five, six, possibly seven teams that could cause an issue against City. When I say that, I don't mean beat us all the time, but, you know, could get a point here and then, make it tricky defensively. And we've come out and sort of just eliminated absolutely everyone. And as you can see, I mean, ridiculously dominant. I'm not sure exactly what it is. So 32 wins, four draws and two losses. So a very, very good stat line there and a very convincing season win. That is going to leave us with one last team and that is going to be Sporting. Again, a viewer suggestion. So... Here you go, bud. Hopefully you do enjoy the results we got. We managed to win the Portuguese Premier League, the Portuguese League Cup, and also the Portuguese Super Cup, scoring 145 goals and only conceding 30. We've got Paulinho coming in with 58 goals. Pedro Concalves coming in with 7.79. Pedro Porro coming in with 24 assists. This was recorded literally the day before he went to Tottenham and the day before I could download the database. So I do apologise about that. We've also got a very, I mean, it's just the way we won the league was very convincing. I mean, the point gap is absolutely nuts. We're going to go into the data hub quickly. 4.26 goals per game in this division as well, and 0.88, which I believe is joint highest conceded. So even at the highest rate, you're still conceding less than a goal a game with this amazing 4 2 3 1. So that is very, very, that, that should sell the tactic alone. But you partner that alongside, you know, scoring over three and a half goals with the other sides, over four goals with Man City and Sporting. That's a really, really good sign that you need to try this tactic out, guys. You really do. If we go into the actual division, which we'll do now, team overview, as you can see, we've got most points per game, most goals, most shots for, fewer shots against, most dribbles made, and fewest conceded. So a lot of stats going in our favour. That is going to be six out of a potential 10. So it's over half of 
all of the stats go into us. So very good to see, very convincing. And as I said, pretty much every single test we've done, that's why I had to get this video out for you guys early compared to what we usually do, because I want you guys to test this out for yourselves because it is a really, really good tactic. And we are now going to go ahead and break down this tactic after we watch a couple of games or a game, see some of the goals that go in. But if you are enjoying the video so far, be sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to the FM Scout channel. And yeah, just check out the other content as well, guys. There's tons of stuff to keep you entertained. So we picked out a game in the Portuguese Cup semi-final, and I picked it out because it was against Porto, obviously one of the toughest teams in this division. And I thought it would be quite a good watch, and it ended up being a 5-1 win, believe it or not. And it is going to be them who do pick up the first goal with Pepe, which in my opinion, keeper should not be getting beat at his near post. It was a powerful strike, but he should never be getting beat at his near post. We do bounce back, though, with Pedro Porro into Agate with a beautiful ball over the top, a great little first touch, and again, Keeper could be doing better there as well. So I guess we're one for one on that, but a great bit of build-up play from midfield, linking it all the way to attack in pretty much one pass. And as we go again here, you are seeing some of the tiki-taka. So maybe it is based around that because, I mean, that definitely was some very nice pass and play. And Paulinho's there to finish it off. As I said, I think this tactic just does a little bit of everything. It can do the tiki-taka, but also, as you saw in the first goal, it has got the sort of range to go direct as well so you can expect to see several different ways of creating your chances as we build up very well here again with Pedro Porro down the right hand side he's going to go solo this time and what a fullback they're missing by the way I think Tottenham have really gained a good fullback here and hopefully he does deliver for him Pedro Porro a great ball in and a fantastic header obviously you're going to have the set pieces come with this tactic as well we've got Agate into Pedro Lovely ball into Edwards. Again, a fantastic talent into Paulinho. Little touch, and it's an easy finish to wrap the game up. That should be the last goal, I believe, with a 5-1 win. So a dominant way to come back. Obviously, we went 1-0 down inside of six minutes. We didn't crumble. We bounced back in 17, 23, 32, 41, 45. And obviously, the last goal is going to be in the 87th minute. But it was a game we did deserve to win. I mean, we had more possession, more shots on target, better XG, more shots overall. I don't think anyone's complaining that we won that. So guys, we're now going to break down the tactic. If you are enjoying it so far, be sure to show some love by leaving a like. You can also check out my channel in the description. We're currently uploading daily for this week to celebrate 5k subs. On my channel, you can see very similar content, tactics, also some rebuilds on there as well. So be sure to come over if you do enjoy your tactics. But let's go ahead and break down this fantastic nap tactic. So the name of this one is too long to say, as usually they are, but the link is going to be in the description. So as long as this one matches to the one you download, which should take you directly to it, then you will be completely fine. But to start with, it is going to be a mentality set to attack. And a lot of naps tactics are, and they work really well like this. In possession, you want fairly wide, pass into space, overlap left and right, focus play down the left and the right, shorter pass and directness with a higher tempo, run at defence, work ball into the box and low crosses. In transition, you want counter press, counter, distribute to the fullbacks and throw it long. Out of possession, you want a higher defensive line, high press line of engagement, much more often and prevent your goalkeeper distribution. So a very attacking style tactic. And again, if you do for some reason wish to defend your games, um, say you're like a goal up in this, there's 10 minutes left, etc., etc. You could look to lower that defensive line, obviously, possibly to standard. That would just sort of even out the game a little bit. Or if you want to go really real, you know, backs against the wall, throwing everything at it, you could even have it to lower, drop the line a little bit completely, have drop off more, you know, stay on feet, stay disciplined, allow the shots, but sort of, you know, just try and maintain that goal lead. But I, I always recommend in FM, don't go too defensive because sometimes you invite too much pressure on and eventually it always means you're going to concede. And that leaves us with the player roles. And here we go then. So we're going to start off with a sweeper keeper on defend. And that is going to be take fewer risks and ease off tackles. We've got two complete wing backs on attack. And they are the same instructions. So I'm going to read out one. They are literally the same, both on attack. So pass it shorter, take more risks, cross more often, dribble more, shoot less often, close down more, tackle harder, run wide with the ball, cross from byline, get further forwards, stay wider, and also roam from position. And then we've got a ball playing defender on defend, pass it shorter, dribble more, shoot less often, stay wider, tackle harder, take more risks and hold position. And then to partner in, we've got another ball playing defender, but this one is going to be on cover. Pass it shorter, dribble more, shoot less often, stay wider, tackle harder, and take more risks. The two in midfield, then we have a DM on support and also a Valante on attack. 
the DM is going to be pass it shorter, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, get further forwards, close down more, tackle harder, and also mark tighter. And then the Volante, which worked really well in this system, on attack, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, tackle harder, and get further forwards. Now, we have two inside forwards on the left and the right. Again, they have got exactly the same instructions, both on attack. So I wouldn't really recommend tweaking any of this, guys, if you could help it. Obviously, if you haven't got players that can play Volante, um, then you could look to change that to possibly like a Roman playmaker, something like that. But you can leave a comment below um, on any suggestions and I'll happily get back to you with that one. But moving on, the inside forwards on the left and the right, both on attack, tackle harder, dribble more, cut inside with the ball, take more risks, cross less often, and also get further forwards. Moving on then, the shadow striker on attack, dribble more, take more risks, get further forward, and move into channels. And the striker, the last player, on advance forward and attack roll, pass it shorter, take more risks, dribble more, tackle harder, and move into channels. And that is going to be the map tactic broken down, guys. As always, show some love to him in the comments. And do you know what? He, he makes some absolutely world-class tactics. And this one is just another one to add to his catalogue of tactics. So if you do want to test it out, you can do it by either copying the instructions yourself, if you want to you know, possibly tweak things as you go, or you can download it from the link in the description. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. It would mean a lot if you chose some love on the channel by leaving a, you know, a subscription to the channel, leaving a like, leaving a positive comment, whatever you wish to do. It does mean a lot. I will see you guys in the next one.